long time ago, when I was a little boy, some young man from the village burst into our house and he proceeded to weep with Nyaunyo, some other young men who were in, in our house. I didn't understand what was going on. When I later grew up, I understood what was happening. The guys or the young men who had been in our house were actually coming to, were dating my sisters, or one of my sisters, and the other village girls who used to stay in our house because like it used to happen in those days. Many women would join their husbands in Nairobi or wherever they were working. So my mother was not at home. And our home had become a place where many girls used to come and sleep. So this young man came and whipped these other me young men. And I could see them really suffering and crying and running away. That was the then, because in those days, people got girls or women, even wives, through those kind of struggles. From the village dances, sometimes you are, you are living with a girl. Other young men will really whip you, but you will take the hold of the girl and reach home, and then she could perhaps become your wife. The same thing seems to be happening in a metaphorical way in this country today, in Western province, where I am witnessing senior members of the community fighting over a girl. I'm looking at my elder friend, Francis Atwole, and my brother friend, Boni Halwale, fighting over a girl. Granted, the girl is very beautiful, but why are they fighting over a girl, given that whoever takes this girl will not take them home? If Boni Halwale were to win over this girl, he will not take this girl to Ikolomani to be married by a Muidaho or a Luya. He would deliver this girl to Surugoi in Rift Valley. Equally, if Francis Atoli, a man I respect immensely, were to win over this girl, he intends to take the girl all the way to Bondo in Yanza. So I'm wondering, is it therefore really worth it that two lawyers should fight over a girl whom in the end they would deliver, not to Western province, the Luya nation, to a young Luya man, but instead deliver either to somebody in Nyanza or in Rift Valley. I want to urge my friends to stop this war. First, it is shameful, it is embarrassing the Luya nation. It is not even how we do things as Luyas. First of all, Unlike what Bon Halwale says, a curse from Atoli will hold. Because in the Luya culture, your elder brother is your father, especially if your father is not around. So Bon Halwale, if Atoli cast you, the curse will catch you, as the Luya say. Equally, I ask Atoli that among the Luya people, if a kid misbehaves, you don't take an axe or, or a club or a stick and you know even where to beat the kid. So I am thinking that we should bring this thing to an end. If we must play this politics, there's nothing wrong with anybody supporting William Samoy Ruto or Raila Odinga for that matter or anybody else for that matter. But the moment you do it to a level where people are wondering, why are two lawyers fighting over something that is not even... Uh, somebody would understand if Halwale was saying, it is Wetangula, Weta. And Atul was saying, no, it is Mdavadi. People would understand. But when you are fighting, and then you deliver the, the girl to another, another corner of this country, it doesn't make sense. And I think what I am suggesting is this. When something like this happens, Instead of answering your elder, look for fellow elders like us to tell him, sit him down and tell him, Francis, these are our children, these are our younger brothers, let's not cast them. And equally, I appeal also to my brother, Francis Atoli, not to cast the young children. These are young boys. The Chesa is a young boy. He'll grow up one day and he'll know he made a mistake. Because you are not just an elder, you are a respected 
Luya and national leader, Francis Atoli. So these young people must learn to respect you. But equally also, as a fellow elder, I advise you, don't cast them. These boys are, have gone astray a bit. And, and, and this really is important because we are enter, entering a very dynamic stage in our politics. And, the, and, and the people are going to be, to, to be rubbed. Egos are going to be bruised. There are going to be conflicts. So unless we watch how we are going to fight this, this war, we are going to have a lot of enemy fire destroying a lot of us. It, it is important. And before I end this, I must also ask my brother Francis Atwoli. What you said about William Samoy Ruto from LAM, you are entitled to your own opinion. All of us are. Uh, many of the things you say I agree with. Uh, not necessarily I support, but it's your right to say. What, however, my brother, you must accept is that the issue of saying William Samoy Ruto will not be in the, on the ballot in 20, whatever it meant, it has only one interpretation to a majority of Kenyans. And I think you owe it to your community, you owe it to yourself, you owe it to your friends and brothers like me, you owe it to William Samoy Ruto and to everybody else, not just to explain what you mean. I think, I think you can buy the bullet and apologize to William Samoy Ruto. Because I shudder to imagine, should, and, and, and heaven and God forbid, should something happen to William Samoy Ruto, you would have planted a seed of enmity between the Kalenjin and the Luya that will take generations to heal. So I appeal to you as a friend and a fellow elder, find time to explain this and apologize to William.